So as the clock struck midnight, the 1st of January 2020, I made myself a little New Year's resolution, which was to put out a series of videos to cover how far I got with my relay computer so far. And I somehow managed to do it. Five videos in the space of a month. So with all that out of the way, I'm now at the point of thinking what comes next. And so in this video, I'm going to give you a little bit of an insight into what I'm thinking of doing next. So effectively, I'm going to build up a to-do list. Now, at the end of the videos, you saw this program that was uh, used to calculate the Fibonacci sequence. Now, although it did work, there were definitely some shortcomings with it. First of all, it could only do 8 bits. Uh, and that means you could only count up to as high a value as can be held in 8 bits, which isn't very much. So if I really want to make this program really go for it, uh, I need to be able to go up to at least 16 bits, if not a bit further. Another problem is that every time it runs, it overwrites one of the values it's created. And that's fine, it just means you just have to keep watching register A to see what value it has. But obviously it would be much better if it actually wrote it into memory. Um, so after the program is run, you could see a whole list of all the values that have been done. But of course, that's nothing compared to this one right here. And this is necessary to go into an infinite loop because there's no way of stopping the computer. It will just run on forever. So taking these three things together, I'd say this scores pretty much a C minus. Definitely room for improvement. So how would we go about tackling some of those problems? Well, first of all, the reason why we can only do things in 8 bits is because we don't have enough registers that we can get at. At the moment, we can only use A, B, C and D. So a definite improvement would be able to use all eight of the general purpose registers. Well, that would just be a case of just extending the move8 instruction so that it can deal with the M1, M2, X and Y registers. That then means I could uh, add together the lower 8 bits of a result and then move on to add the upper 8 bits. And just by moving values around, I can effectively do a 16-bit add. The second issue is that it keeps overwriting the values each time it does an iteration of the uh, calculation. Now what would be really good then is if we could take a value from one of the uh, A, B, C or D registers and write that into memory. And uh, that's the load and store instructions. So basically here every time uh, a result is created we could just write it to a location in memory and then uh, move that location on and write it to the next location, effectively building up a table of results as we go along. Now we just mentioned there about uh, moving uh, on in memory. Um, so this is where the, usually the XY register comes in quite handy if you want to uh, refer to a certain location in memory. Um, but obviously we want to keep on incrementing that and it would be great if we could use the, uh, the incrementer down there at the bottom. Uh, that's already used to uh, increment the uh, program counter of course, um, but it would be really good to be able to use it on the XY register as well. Well again, there's an instruction for that and that's the increment XY instruction. So that's something else we could, uh, I could add to the computer as well. So that gives me uh, most of the things I'm after. And uh, if we just quickly look at the uh, table and instructions again, you can see here there's the load, the store, uh, and the increment XY. Now there's also the move16 and misc instruction classes uh, that are still outstanding as well. Now if you look at the list of uh, mnemonics here, uh, we can see that the uh, RTS, the return from subroutine, uh, is effectively a move 16 because what it'll do is it will load the program counter with the value that's in the XY register, effectively moving you back to wherever XY was pointing to. Uh, notice there at the left then we also have the increment XY mnemonic and then in the middle column we've got the load from switches uh, which will just take any value on the front panel switches and put that into a register and there's a load from memory and the store to memory. So that's pretty much it for uh, what we need to do with the instructions. Um, but just going back to that program again, what about that killer line right there? Uh, the one where we can't stop the computer, it will just go around in an infinite loop. Well, I'm not sure if you remember from the uh, computer tour video, but I showed you this little card. Now this is a temporary clock, but really we need a proper clock and it needs to go here in the final bay that's left in the computer. Now when we've got a proper clock, that will be something then we can stop and start. Uh, and we'll be able to stop it using the HALT instructions, either HLT to just HALT the clock, or the HALT and RELOAD, which will load the value on the front switches. Now what would also be cool is when the computer HALTs, is to ring a bell to let you know it's finished. 
Now I've actually seen this on a, uh, a relay computer that's been used to uh, calculate square roots. Uh, I can't remember the name of it, but it's out there on YouTube. I'll put a link to it in the description. Uh, and that just exactly that, it rings the bell when it's finished and it's kind of cute, kind of quirky. And I thought I'd quite like to do that for my own computer. So that's uh, instruction classes and some features out of the way. Uh, what else? Well, looking at the back of the computer, there's one thing that sticks out a mile to me, is that it's messy, messy, messy. All those cables sticking out all over the place, uh, a real jumble, and I'm sure there's something I can do to improve that. Well, I already have a plan up my sleeve for this one, and it comes in the form of an improved backplane card. Now, of course, it's just simply a PCB version of the backplane cards that are already there. Uh, but what this does is, rather than having uh, all the various connectors connected together by a ribbon cable, uh, they're all just tracks on the PCB. So, so far, there's nothing really new here. Uh, this is something we've already seen on the Y backplane, uh, where I created my own PCB by hand. Um, looking at the side of this card, uh, it's exactly as you would expect. Although, note this is for the W backplane, so it's a little bit more complicated than the others, because there's two different types of card connector here, W1 and W2. And we need to connect all the W2s together and connect all the W1s together. And this is where having a double-sided board makes this actually possible. And this is something I couldn't realistically do by hand on my own. Uh, so needless to say, I will replace the uh, X, Y and Z backplanes with very similar cards when I get them designed up and produced. Um, so OK, um, the keen-eyed of you so far will notice that there's actually this doesn't really solve the problem of all those cables all over the place. It uh, solves the daisy chain of cables across the backplane connectors, but it doesn't solve the connecting to other cards. Well, there's more than meets the eye to this. Uh, you probably see these the connectors running down the left-hand side and right-hand side of the card. Well, they connect to this. And effectively, this is a daughter card that really tries to represent those individual cables. So you can see then white lines. That's where the signals are passed between the connectors at the top and the bottom. And then they'll plug in to the, uh, to the part of the backplane. So then together, these form a sandwich that's kind of like a four-layer PCB, uh, but actually it worked out when I was looking at this that it was uh, it's quite complicated to make a four-layer PCB and actually more expensive than just creating two cards separately. So that's what I've gone for. And I think this is quite nice actually to look at uh, and basically it's a PCB equivalent of all those cables. Um, so I will mount this into the computer at some point, but yeah, this is my solution for uh, tidying up the back of the case a bit. Now, I was just saying there that we're going to upgrade the uh, back planes. Uh, what else do we need to upgrade? Well, so far, if we look at the uh, front of the uh, card base, you can see that eight cards so far that are using uh, professionally manufactured PCBs. But of course, all five cards in the Z bay are still all handmade uh, using the wire wrap technique, and the memory cards are the same. And the same applies for the program counter, instruction register, and the incrementer. Now, I'm not planning to rush getting these converted to professional PCBs. And what I'll do is I'll just probably do one or two each time I make an order for new PCBs. Uh, and I'll just do these slowly over time. There's no really no rush for these. Um, they all work as they are. Uh, it's just more a case just being consistent and uh, making them look nicer. Uh, last one on the upgrades then is probably just down here on the power distribution board. Uh, and I think that's one that I'll probably will just, uh, again, next time I put in an order, I'll just quickly get a uh, professionally made PCB in here, uh, just so everything's nice and tidy and uh, looking a bit more professional. Right, so that's a, a fairly full to-do list. Um, but what else have I got my eye on? Well, again, looking back at this, there's one thing that's always annoyed me when making videos, and that's a problem that I've really ended up making a, a portrait computer. But of course, all videos are in landscape. And what you've often found me doing is that I need to uh, do multi-screen techniques to try and fit everything in on screen. Well, the answer to this is probably quite obvious. Uh, just turn the computer on its side so that the computer is in landscape. Now, a nice added benefit to this is that all the cards in the base are now the right way up. So all the legend strips read right as well. However, you probably notice now what's good for the card base isn't quite so good for display A and B. Uh, that's now on its side. Well, again, maybe there's a solution to that. And what we could do is just rotate that round so that now both things are the right way around, and now we're getting somewhere. But clearly there's a small problem here, which is now the right-hand side of the computer is hovering in mid-air. But what this does, this gives an opportunity to fill out that space, like so. The question is, what would we put here? Well, I'll get to that in a moment. 
But either way, I think moving the computer around a little bit will just make it much easier to film. And uh, actually, if I could make the left-hand side detachable from the right-hand side, it would make it much easier to move because this computer is getting quite heavy now. Um, so I, I just think this will be a nice way around. Whether or not I'll do this or not, I'm not quite sure yet. But in theory, it should be totally possible. And I should just better just pass the cable straight through from the card base into the what will become the right-hand unit. No problem at all. So if I were to move the computer around, what could I put in those uh, new slots? Well, there is one problem I know is coming with this computer. So far, a nice simple program is no problem to enter in. You just use the front panel switches, click the switches for each line of the program, and then load it in. And that's fine so far because most programs have been quite small. But you can see where this is going. It's going to get more and more annoying as we add more and more lines to the program. It's going to take longer and longer to put the program into the computer and I'm going to get more and more annoyed with it. Now, I've known this has been coming for a long time, and so I have been playing with an idea, and uh, if you've had a keen eye, you might have seen it in some of my previous videos. It's this little guy down here. Now, the rest of this is currently covered up with a bit of paper, um, but here's a close-up of it. And basically what you're looking at here is kind of an optical strip uh, that could be fed into the computer and then read, uh, and that would give me a nice quick way of loading in programs into the computer. Uh, it's very similar to the way uh, lottery slips are sort of read in the UK. And it kind of takes its inspiration from uh, you know the really old computers that used to use punch cards. Now I was thinking about using punch cards this computer, but they uh, they would be quite difficult to make. Uh, whereas here I can just print these out on any old printer, and it should just work. I also plan to add this to my Relay Computer Editor, uh, so when you've made an assembly program, you'll be able to assemble it and then print it out in this format and then feed it into the computer. So it just makes everything quite nice and easy. So originally I was planning to do this on the very top of the computer in uh, what would have been the only space that was left. And um, the bit highlighted here is where you would feed the strip in and basically it would go in and then come back out at the top slot. Uh, and you could just keep feeding tapes in. What it would do is just load from wherever the current program counter is pointing to and just operate just as you would operate the front panel switches. And that will make it much, much easier to load the computer. Now alongside those, uh, to the left and to the right, were spaces for additional displays. And I'll more than likely uh, continue this through to the computer if I do rearrange it all. Um, and one display I've got in mind is a uh, what's known as a flip dot display. Uh, now, again, if you've uh, not seen these, definitely worth looking up on YouTube. Um, you'll, if you know them, you'll know them. Uh, and I think they really would suit working in this computer. It really suit the whole relay uh, aesthetic type thing that's going on. Uh, another thing that annoys me as well is uh, often I eventually get used to sort of decoding binary into decimal. Uh, but it would be quite nice to have a couple of displays that just say well, what the value in B and C is in decimal. Now I'll need to be able to then differentiate between a signed decimal and an unsigned decimal, but you know, again, we can, we can play with that. So there's definitely a bit more room to have some displays there, so that's definitely on my mind as well. Um, just while looking at my feverish scribblings, uh, another one of them was this panel here. Uh, this will all go on the uh, back panel uh, here, where it's highlighted. And this will just be uh, where I'll expose some of the various buses that are going uh, through the computer so that you could then extend this. In fact, I think one person on the YouTube was mentioning that, uh, well, why didn't you load it from an Arduino? Well, exposing the buses through the back of the computer would allow you to do just that. Uh, so that's another idea I've been playing with as well. So again, these are all, uh, all options on the table. Um, I think in terms of order, I'll, um, I mean, the load store, move 8, 16 and increment XY instructions, uh, the computer's got everything it needs to do that, I just need to solder in some additional relays, so that'll definitely be nice and easy. The clock can halt, uh, I need to design that card. Uh, I've got a couple of choices there, I could either just do a, um, a clock based on the crystal oscillator, like the temporary card does, or I could uh, do a, a proper authentic relay clock. In reality I'll probably do both, and let it so you can switch between the two. That's something I've got to design from scratch, I'll have to get the PCB ordered in, so that's something I'll definitely do this year, but probably not uh, immediately. Um, the loading thing and the displays, again, moving the case around. Uh, yeah, I'll probably do that as we go along, actually, but that they are sort of bigger pieces of work. So uh, I'll uh, definitely uh, start blogging some more designs on, on my blog. And I certainly think for loading of the uh, those program strips, uh, I'll have to do some prototyping and uh, do some breadboarding. So And again, I'll share some videos when I'm doing those because uh, that, that could be quite interesting. As for the upgrades, the backplanes, the power distribution and the wire wrap cards, I'll just do those as I go along. And because a lot of those are requiring me to order in PCBs, those I'll just do uh, as and when, as we go along. Right, well, that's pretty much it for this update video. Um, so hopefully that gives you an insight into what I'm thinking of doing next. Again, if you do have any ideas or anything you have any questions on, uh, please do just uh, drop them in the comments. I'll uh, try and get back to you. 
And uh, one thing I did just want to leave you with was this. So uh, I opened this up um, in one of my uh, videos from maybe a couple of years ago. And basically it was uh, an opportunity for you guys to uh, have a go at programming my computer if you fancied. And now admittedly the instruction set at the time was quite limited. But now I think the computer is capable of doing a bit more. So if you'd like to, uh, you can certainly look at the uh, links here. Um, so you can look on my blog and look at the list of assembly instructions. Uh, There's my editor at editor.relaycomputer.co.uk where you can have a go at uh, creating a program. Now if you want to hand assemble it, you can even then take that into my simulator. Uh, but either way, if you've got a program that you quite like and you would like to see loaded into the computer, uh, by all means just post it in the comments here. And what I'll do is I'll, uh, I'll take a selection of the, uh, the good ones and pull them together into a video and uh, yeah, post it on YouTube. So uh, yeah, don't worry, I'll take no offence if uh, nobody takes me up on the offer, but just thought I'd put it out there again in case any of you fancied it. Right, well, that's it for the moment. I'm going to take a bit of a break again, just while I uh, recompose myself and get myself ready to do some more uh, construction. But um, other than that, thank you for watching, and uh, yeah, see you soon.